today we'll be creating this particular vortex loop. Personally, it reminds me of those anime style shaders and you could use this as an overlay using the luma key in any of your anime videos. It's purely a node based setup so it's going to be done in the shader editor. And with that, let's begin the actual tutorial. In our default scene, we won't require the default cube, so we'll tap X and delete it. Then we'll press Shift A and search for a mesh cylinder. Now, before we actually move the cylinder, we're going to expand this dropdown over here and increase the number of vertices from 32 to something like 128 so that it's nice and smooth. And we'll also change the depth from two meters to four meters so that it's a bit longer. Then we'll press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, after which we'll press tab to go into edit mode. In edit Edit mode, we'll first select these two faces by pressing shift and selecting them and then tapping X and deleting the faces. Of course, you could have switched the fill type to none in the first drop down itself, but deleting them is fine as well. Then we'll come to the side view like this and press Ctrl R to add in a loop cut and we'll just start using our scroll wheel to increase the number of cuts till we get cuts that make this fairly square. That means each face should be roughly square in shape and then double click to confirm the number of cuts and you can see that each of the faces are roughly square in shape itself. Once you've done that, make sure you're on edge select mode, which is this button over here, and just press shift alt and select to select the entire edge ring. Once you have the entire edge ring selected, press O to switch on proportional editing and then press R Y and then start increasing your scroll wheel until everything starts rotating. So if you look here, even this edge is getting rotated, but it's still stopping before the start of our cylinder. Let's just increase our scroll wheel and that should be fairly cool. So now we'll rotate it by maybe a whole 360 degrees and then we'll just press enter to confirm the rotation. So once you have this rotated, you can press S and start scaling it down so that we get this funnel like shape. Now you can go as small as you want, but something like this should be good enough. And if you want before doing that, you can also change this from smooth to something like sharp or inverse square to just get different types of tapering. So that's it for creating the actual vortex shape. Next, you can click object and choose shade smooth. Now for the actual texturing, we'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom, and then go to our output properties, change our frame rate to 60 frames per second End frame will keep 300 so that it's a five second long loop output folder wherever you want it to be file format will choose ffmpeg video encoding will choose a container of mpeg4 and an output quality of perceptually lossless then we'll switch our viewport shading to rendered and we'll just select our default light and delete it now with the cylinder selected we'll go to our material properties and we'll use this drop down here to choose the default material and we'll rename this as vortex once we have that done we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3d viewport to the shader editor now we'll actually start off with the vortex material the first thing that we want is to actually allow the texture to follow those rotations that we made in edit mode. For that, if we were to currently search for a noise texture and plug it into the emission socket, you'll see that the noise is not actually swirling about with the swirls that we created. So to make that happen, we're going to select the noise texture and press Ctrl T with the node wrangler enabled. If you don't have node wrangler enabled, just add in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and connect them up just like this. But make sure that you switch from generated to UV and if you plug that in, it should follow the curves. So now it's clearly swirling in right to the center, which is the exact effect that we wanted. To select the necessary colors, you can go ahead and press Shift A and search for a color ramp node and plug that in after the noise texture. But if you like these rainbow colors, you can always keep it just like this itself. With the color ramp placed, what I'm going to do is bring this black in and bring the white in. And I'm also going to control click to add in a new stop over here or press this plus button and just play around with the colors and positioning. So with these four stops, that's two in the middle to create more black areas areas and two in the outer regions that are going to be giving the colors, I'm going to make the first stop a nice orangish color and the second one maybe a nice bluish color like this. Then I'll just bring the black in closer and closer to reveal more and more of the color. Along with that, I don't want this to actually be a principled BSDF. So I'm just going to press X to delete it and I'll press Shift A and search for an emission node and I'll plug this color into the color of the emission node and plug this into the surface. Now I'll go to my world properties and just change the background color all the way to black. And in my render properties, I'm going to expand the bloom and I'll change the intensity to 0. 0.02 and I'll clamp it down at something like four so that the bloom does not get too intense. And then I'll just increase the strength to something really, really high so that we get complete whites in the middle and the colors towards the edges and a little bit of bloom as well. So that looks all right for the main vortex. Of course, you can play around with the size of the scale and things like that to get different effects. So for this effect, I'll probably go with a size of 3.5 and I'll just increase the detail from two to something like four just so that we get some more detail added into the vortex. And then to actually make this rotate, 
you'll see that using the rotation on the mapping node, you can use the Z value to make it look like it's swirling in towards the center. So that is the effect that we're going for. But there's a huge problem with this, which might not be noticeable at first glance. But if you actually were to play the animation, you'd notice that there's a hard seam present right here. So we need to actually remove this particular seam because when you play the animation, that seam becomes very noticeable. And that occurs because we're using the UV coordinates and UVs for circular shapes like this will have to have some seam towards the ends of the UVs. So we have to remove this particular seam. So the way we'll remove the seam is by taking the texture coordinate and just moving it to the side and then separating out the X, Y and Z components over here. So if we press shift and search for a separate X, Y, Z node, we can plug that in here. And to get the exact same result again, we'll press shift A and search for a combined X, Y, Z node. And remember, even areas like this itself could be a really cool effect in case you want to create some sort of an animation like this, but that's not what we're going for today. Let's plug the combined X, Y, Z node in and plug in the X to the X, the Y to the Y and the Z to the Z. Now everything should be the exact same, but if we control shift click the separate X, Y, Z node, we can see what the X component looks like. And we see that the seam is being created because of the X component. If you look at the Y component and the Z component, we see that there are no seams present on the Y and the Z. So it's completely due to the X component's fault. So what we'll do is we'll create a mask and we'll just hide this entire color ramp just around that seam so that it no longer can be seen. For that, we'll press shift and search for a color ramp node and we'll take this X value and plug it into the factor so that if we now look at the color ramp, we should get the exact same seam. But to remove the seam, we can bring this white towards the center, control click to add in a stop here and change this to black as well so that we have a nice little black seam where we can fade out whatever light we have. Now we can always control click here and just add in one more stop of white so that we have these areas far more bright and to also make this a little smoother of a transition we'll change this from linear to ease so once we have this set we can use this as a mask to this color ramp so we'll press shift a and search for a mix color node and we'll change the type from mix to multiply so we click this and choose multiply and then plug this color ramp color into socket B and we change the factor all the way to one. So now if we look at the output by connecting the emission into the surface, you won't exactly be able to tell. But when you play the animation by rotating it on the Z, you can see the rotation, but you no longer see that seam because it's being hidden out by the mask that we created. So to set up the animation, we'll just press the back arrow to go to frame zero. We'll change the rotation to zero as well. And we'll tap I and then we'll go to frame 300, which is our last frame. And we'll change the Z value to 360, which means one full rotation and we'll tap I. Now we'll select the mapping node and come down here with both the keyframes selected, we'll press T and choose linear so that we get a smooth loop where this rotates all the way around. Now, of course, if you feel like the speed is too fast or too slow, you can change the actual length of the animation by taking this last keyframe and then moving it either to the right to make it slower or to the left to make it faster. But for the time being, I'll keep it at this itself. So the next order of business is that right now, all of these go right to the center and then they just disappear where there's no face present. And that doesn't look too good. We need it to smooth transition out of the screen. So for that, we'll press shift A and we'll search for a gradient texture. And if we control shift click the gradient texture, we'll see that it's currently going from this left to the right, but we want it to go from the back to the front where the back is completely black so that we can use that as another mask after this mask that we created. So let's press control T with the node wrangler enabled to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And then the first thing that we can do is just change this from generated to object so that it goes from the center of the object. Then we'll rotate it about the Y axis by 90 degrees. And now you can see that it is going from this right hand side to the front. However, obviously the gradient is too short. So we'll just reduce the scale on all of the axes to make the gradient much smoother. And then we'll just change the location back on the X to something like that. Now we have it completely black over there and it slowly becomes white. But even this I feel is too slow of gradient. Let's just bring this back to maybe 0.2 and then we'll just push this back. So that looks great. And if we use this as the mask, so we can select this multiply node and press shift D to duplicate it, plug it in right after the first multiply node and then take the output of this gradient texture and plug it into socket B of this new multiply node that we created. Now, if we plug this into the output, we should be able to see our gradient slowly go into nothingness. Now, although this looks a lot better, it's still a bit too sharp. And I think we can make this even better by having some noise be present right at this edge as it slowly gets devoured into the center. So to add in that noise, we can actually play around with the X socket of this location. So to get access over just the X socket, we'll press shift A and search for a combined XYZ node. And now we can use just 
DX socket over here. Now we want to connect this up with a noise texture. So let's search for a noise texture. And then we'll start off by plugging this color into the X socket. Now, if we take a look at it, we are able to see some amount of noise, as you can see over here and over here. But clearly that doesn't look good because it's just static right there. So to make this noise also rotate along with the vortex, we can simply take this vector and use the same vector from this mapping node that we have over here because the rotation is happening on this mapping node. Let's plug that into the vector so you can see how it is. And now even the noise is also rotating along with the rest of the animation. So you can't really tell that sharp of an edge and it looks a lot better. Of course, I want to just increase the scale of the noise. So I'll press shift A and search for a math node and I'll change this from add to multiply. And now you can actually control till what region the actual noise is seen. So if we actually multiply it by one, which means the math node is not affecting the noise, you can see that there are few particles right here, which keep appearing and disappearing. And I think that's getting too close to that center region. So just by reducing this value, we can increase that effect. And to make this noise a little more noisy, we can just increase the scale from five to something like 10. So that I think looks much better. And I think I'm going to leave it like this. Of course, you can play around with the scale of the original noise texture and things like that based on your preferences. I'll maybe change it up to five. And essentially, this is it. So we have to place our camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Now you can press zero to go into your camera view. And then you can press G Y and just use your mouse to drag the camera back. Then we'll go to our camera properties, change the focal length down to something like 25 so that it's a much more wide angle view, you could go even lower to something like 18 as well. But make sure that you press GY and bring it back in so that nothing outside the tunnel is seen within the camera. You can also go to your viewport display, go to passport out and increase that all the way to one so that nothing is seen. So with that, you should have this really cool vortex that rotates in right to the center. And you can definitely play around with the settings a little bit more to get varying results. You get much smoother blobs if you change the detail down to zero on the original noise texture, but you can always increase the detail up along with some rough to get some crazy fiery lines just like this. So once you're happy with the way your vortex is looking, you can go ahead and then press render animation. I think this was an easy one. It was not too difficult, but there are many techniques that might come in handy later on, such as how we removed the seam and how we blended everything in using different multiply nodes. If you enjoyed this one, there are many other procedural materials that I've created on this channel. And I've also created multiple looping videos because I post videos every single day. And I'm sure there's a lot of content that's just waiting to be discovered by you. So until the next video comes out tomorrow, you can keep scrolling through them and you can keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.